Good morning. Good morning. Great joy to welcome you to this service of Holy Eucharist online or uh, in person here in the sanctuary. It's the fifth Sunday in Lent, uh, the season of the church year of lengthening our roots in God's love and the roots of God's love in us. Today our theme is extravagant love, ours for Jesus and his for us and through us. There's a large print order of service uh, that's on the credenza as you uh, came in today. And uh, if you're sharing the service online and would like a written order of service, uh, you can find that in the sermon section of our website. Let's bow our heads as we begin. Let's pray. Our loving God, we thank you so much that uh, you call us to worship you today and gather with our brothers and sisters published in each one's life. And we ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. <laughs> our opening hymn is number 27 in our Red Song books, and the words are on our screen. I invite all who are able to stand as we sing, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Please be seated. For our first reading from Holy Spirit. 
Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings her chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals, and the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. And I speak to our When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, there were really rose to tree. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and then our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad in thee. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water courses of the mango. Those who sow with tears it will reap the songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed it will come in with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Together, praise, praise to you, God of our salvation. Your generous gifts surpass all that we can ask for imagine. You have delivered us from the exile of sin. And restore us to new life in Jesus Christ our Savior. Glory and honor and praise to you forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have our second reading from Holy Scripture. If anyone else has a reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in the order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own. This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I invite all who are able to stand as we sing our gradual hymn. 
just a closer walk with me. such as, you're beautiful, 
Have a Nice Day, which garnered supported honks from passing vehicles and brought smiles to shoppers and brunchgoers along the 8th Avenue walkway. Youth Central is part of the Youth Volunteer Corps, an international youth service organization with programs across Canada and the U.S. Groups in each municipality were tasked with coming up with a, spe a special event for the annual Get Happy project. And uh, what uh, uh, that project is to, to bring happiness to locals in their community. Well, in Calgary, volunteers chose to march from City Hall and up and down Stephen Avenue with smiles, laughter, and messages of encouragement in hopes of making spirits rise uh, in the wake of the economic downturn. This was our way of bringing happiness to the city, said Sylvia Gallagher, Youth Central's outreach coordinator. Every year, Youth Central's volunteers worked with more than 100 organizations, including the Salvation Army, Windsport, and agencies that support children and seniors. In 2021, 994 youth were engaged in 387 volunteer projects for a total of 12,455 volunteer hours. I was touched uh, by that 2016 uh, uh, extravagant love that uh, they came up with, with no point uh, except to share love. An extravagant love is the theme of today's gospel and epistle. Our love for Jesus and his love for us and through us. We'll start with our gospel and the anointing of Jesus by Mary of Bethany. And please note, this is not Mary Magdalene uh, or the mother of Jesus. Uh, this is the Mary whose sister is Martha and whose brother is Lazarus. So six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And that was back in chapter 11. This will be Jesus' final Passover when Jesus dies on the cross. In fact, it's only six days before. And uh, to stay uh, in Bethany uh, was close enough to Jerusalem to participate in the Passover there. Well, just a chapter before, Jesus has raised Lazarus to life after he had been dead for four days. And it says that there they gave a dinner for him. And this may have been a thank you dinner for Jesus. In verse 9 it says, there was a great crowd of people present. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. Now it says pure nard in the uh, New Revised Standard Version translation. Definitely it's pistic nard. Uh, and that can mean genuine, pure. Uh, it can also refer to a region. And uh, so um, it might be uh, from that region that this comes from. Now, according to Matthew's parallel, it was in an alabaster flask, which would very likely be a family treasure. For the contents to come out, the flask must be broken. It was customary to wash the feet of guests, but this, of course, goes way beyond that. Craig Keener writes, normally only servants even touched the master's feet. Banqueters were known to wipe excess water or oil on the head or hair of servants. Mary seeks this servant's role as an expression of devotion to Jesus. To say thank you to Jesus for what he did for her and her brother. And uh, John 11 uh, reminds us of the risk that Jesus put himself at when he did that. Uh, 
Remember, before Jesus went, his disciples said, Rabbi, the authorities were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? And, in fact, his going there and raising Lazarus did sign his own death warrant. The authorities said, after this miracle took place, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death, it says. How fitting that Mary should anoint Jesus, as he says, for burial. The one who is the resurrection and the life, and who raised her brother from death. And our passage next says, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. And uh, this may be John's equivalent to what it says in Matthew, where it says, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. That, so this fragrance of the perfume spread. Now, also, the last time the sense of smell was mentioned was when in John 11, uh, Martha expected the smell of decay, but there was light instead, the aroma of life from Jesus' sacrifice. The 11th century poet George Small Ricker wrote, The nard is spilled, and yet throughout that house like grateful balm, its odors laid the air. And from those feet above which Mary bows, the sweetest fragrance goes forth everywhere. Where'er a heart is heavy or a sigh, sobs out from sorrowing soul, or but a tear, falls silently from sad and weeping eye, this fragrance goes to give its grateful cheer. Where men are weary, worn with work or care, or vexed because of burdens borne in vain, or bowed beneath the galling yoke they bear, this fragrance falls and palliates their pain. I threw the whole wide working world indeed, that costly ointment has not yet been spent, but still pours forth its fragrance for our need, and cheers our hearts and gives to us O oh, precious ointment, costly, subtle, sweet, fill every home and heart with thy blessed balm. Flow forth in floods from those anointed feet. O'erwhelm the weary world with peace and calm. But Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, the one that the passage reminds us is about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? For the first time we realized just how extravagant this gift was. A denarius is a day's wage, so this perfume was worth a whole year's wages. Now Judas objects, and according to Matthew 26, he was not alone. In fact, he was joined by the other disciples. Jesus replies, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. In other words, he's saying, she is expressing her love for me. And when you love, you give yourself extravagantly. She's anointed me for my burial. I am about to be poured out for her and for you in the ultimate of extravagant love. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is Mary's last chance to show her love for Jesus, to express it to him and minister to him before his death and resurrection. It's a reminder that we must not put off expressing love when we can. That we must not hold back, but love when we have the opportunity. I've shared before the story about a neighbor talking with a man about his recently departed wife's 
many praiseworthy qualities. Yes, the man replied, my wife was wonderful. There were so many times I almost told her. And uh, I don't want to procrastinate any longer in giving myself to the Lord as I'm yearning to do. I've had quite enough of being lukewarm in my devotion to him. My heart echoes the words of Charles Wesley, O thou who camest from above, the fire celestial to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. There let it for thy glory burn with inextinguishable blaze, and trembling to its source return, in humble prayer and fervent praise. I want to give myself completely in love to the Lord, holding nothing back. And one of the main ways we can express our love for Him is by loving others. And when you think about that, that really makes sense. I mean, if you want to make me happy, bless my daughter. Uh, there's nothing better you can do for me than, than that. And the same principle applies here. John. 1 John chapter 4, it says, Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. In other words, it's very easy to have an illusion and to fool ourselves and say, oh yes, I love God, I'm, I'm giving myself to God wholeheartedly. When we say that, God's going to say, and let's see how you treat your brother or sister, whom I've made and whom I love. This is my commandment, Jesus said, that you love one another as I have loved you. And in John 21, he says to Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep three times. He says that we are to make use of the gifts that we've been given of time, talents, and treasure to express our love to him by allowing him to love others through us, sharing his love, letting it flow through us. We are called to be poured out in love for others, in our interactions with our families, with one another in our parish, with random strangers in our city, such as uh, we talked about at the beginning of this sermon. In our caring for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and throughout the world. In our care for creation. In our prayers, our words, our actions. We are called to be poured out in love and to share it like it will never run out, as we mentioned in last week. Of parable of the prodigal in Pope's uh, wasteful son, which really, if you like, is the story of the prodigal God, the wasteful God, who shares love and pours it out as if it's never going to run out. St. Columbus says, Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love that never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. And this way of love is the way of, of brokenness, so we share that with our Lord. We walk the way of the cross, but to be poured out, that is the way of true life. It's a deep mystery which brings us to the very heart of reality. Malcolm Guide writes, Come close with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, so close the candles stir with their soft breath, and kindle heart and soul to flame within us, lit by these mysteries of life and death. For beauty now begins the final movement, in quietness, an intimate encounter. The alabaster jar of precious ointment is broken open for the world's true lover. 
The hall room richly fills to feast the senses with all the yearning such a fragrance brings. The heart is mourning, but the spirit dances here at the very center of all things. Here at the meeting place of love and loss, we all foresee and see beyond the cross. Intimacy of shared brokenness. Mary Graves writes, Jesus is going to bend down to serve his disciples. He is going to take the greatest family treasure he owns, his own life. Break the neck of the flask of his own lifeblood because of God's great love and passion for you and me. A relationship with Jesus in so many ways is like holy matrimony relationship with our beloved. We have the joy of giving ourselves completely to the one who has given himself completely to us. In fact, Jesus is really saying to Judas here, I should be this precious to you. You should want to give your all to me. You are this precious to me, and I am about to give myself this extravagantly. Judas's tragic response to this is recorded in Matthew's Gospel. It says right after this, Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? Thirty pieces of silver for the priceless Jesus. The Apostle Paul's response was like Mary's. One of the most sublime expressions of love for Jesus in all of Scripture is expressed in our passage from Philippians today, where Paul says, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and don't forget he's writing from prison, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Today Mary and Paul have given us an example. Let's not hold back our hearts from the one who hasn't held his back. In Holy Week, which begins next Sunday, we'll be focusing on the love of our Lord for us, so great that he was poured out in extravagant love for you, me, and us all. Like Mary and Paul, may we give ourselves completely in love to the one who has given himself completely for us. Offer up an entreaty on our screens from Francis Ridley Havergal, expressing this desire of our hearts. Let's say together, Take my love, my Lord, I pour, at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself, and I will be ever holy, all for thee. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray for your everlasting prayer. Now let's affirm our faith and throughout the season of Lent we have been saying together the uh, faith of our baptism. So let's share it as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And born in the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge us living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body and the life of the
seated as we prefer for the prayers of the people. Christian family, for the worldwide church, for our leaders, for Bishop Archbishop Greg and all bishops and clergy, for our parish and our clergy, Fergus, Cyril, Norman, Bob, and Betty, and for our parish at St. Paul's. We pray to you for grace to grow in your life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and the lonely, the hurt and the frightened, and especially any on our hearts this morning whom we name before you now. Loving God, we ask that you comfort and believe them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, as 
especially in the on our hearts today. We ask you to surround them with your love and to give comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for one another, asking you to bless us, our friends and relatives. Bless the places where we work and bless our homes and our life together. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, fill our hearts, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit, that we may spend today and the coming days in peace and joy, serving you eagerly in all we do. We ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry in our humble prayer. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your own name. upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord has spoken peace into our hearts, and so we have that, that gift of peace to share with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Wherever we may be, let's greet one another with the peace of Christ. Please be seated. We're now pausing for a moment to remember our call to offer to God our time, talents, and treasure. Uh, sharing the gifts that God has shared with us. One way that we share our treasure is through the offerings that we give to St. Paul's. Uh, thank you everyone for continuing to give financially to our parish. Uh, your giving is essential for us to carry out the mission of being channels of God's peace, helping heal the brokenness of our global family through our words and our deeds. Some of you who are sharing today's uh, service in person have brought offerings for the offering plate, and uh, that plate is on the credenza, so if you brought that offering, an offering for the offering plate and forgot to put it in when you came in, uh, please Place it there uh, as you leave the sanctuary today. But there are many other ways to give financially to St. Paul's, and our screens are now going to show a slide that mentions the ways that we can uh, share our support and so participate in the mission God has given us. Uh, 
uh, as it does, we'll listen to the hymn that's the source of the closing prayer in the sermon, Take My Life and Let It Be, played on the pipe organ, as I kind of joked uh, in an email I sent uh, yesterday, uh, it's kind of like our uh, away from home organ. <laughs> uh, this is the pipe organ at All Saints Church in Oystermouth, Swansea, Wales. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, 
He brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. The same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. The union in Christ's body was broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. We now have the immeasurable blessing of sharing communion, physically for some of us and spiritually for all of us. To receive communion physically, we're going to have you uh, come up when it's your rose turn. And uh, please uh, maintain uh, physical distancing. The uh, stickers on the floor help us do that. Uh, you may wish to sanitize your hands and then uh, place your hands in the shape of a cross, palms up to receive. Uh, Betty will then uh, place in your hand uh, the host infused with three drops of wine. Uh, then please move to the right or the left, depending on uh, where you're sitting, and you can go back around and uh, be seated. If you don't wish to receive communion, but would like Betty to pray for God to, to uh, bless you, then uh, please uh, uh, come up and kind of as if you were giving yourself a, a hug, and she'll know that's your desire. I invite everyone to come now and share these gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace.
World Relief Development Fund is supporting uh, those enduring violence in Ukraine, uh, and uh, checks can be made out directly to PWRDF or to St. Paul's with PWRDF in the memo. Um, and if you check out uh, this week's news bulletin and uh, Living Waters as well, you'll find out more information about uh, other ways that you can make that donation to them. As part of uh, the March 18th Ecumenical Day of Prayer for Ukraine in our province, we rang the bell of our historic chapel and shared a Zoom service of prayer. And you can watch these on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, photos of the bell ringing, such as the one there, uh, are also included in this month's issue of Living Waters. Our uh, in-person Wednesday services of Holy Eucharist take place at 9.30 in the morning on the first, third, and fifth Wednesdays of the month. And uh, the next one is this Wednesday, April 6th, and everybody is invited. And our next men's breakfast is scheduled for 8.30 a.m. on Holy Saturday, April 16th, and the ladies' luncheon at uh, 11.30 a.m. on the same day. Uh, the men's breakfast is prepared by the men in teams of around two usually uh, uh, for a suggested donation of five dollars which supports the making of biosand water filters. Uh, the ladies' luncheon is usually potluck, but it's bring your own lunch at present due to COVID-19. Uh, 
uh, all men and ladies uh, age 13 and up are welcome. And, uh, please do get your friends. The uh, image on this slide uh, lists the uh, Holy Week services that we have. Uh, Holy Week, as I mentioned, uh, begins uh, next Sunday with Palm Sunday. Uh, look for a procession outside, weather permitting, uh, with palms and palm crosses, and also the dramatic presentation of the Passion Narrative in Luke's Gospel. Uh, on Monday, Norman's going to lead us in Visio Divina, which is like Lectio Divina, but it, it uses an image instead of a text. Um, and uh, the text that it uh, the image that it uses is from St. John's Bible, uh, which, as you will perhaps remember, uh, has uh, spent uh, time at St. Mary's. And uh, the Compline service uh, uh, on the Tuesday of Holy Week is at the Historic Chapel, and uh, um, it'll be from the Book of Common Prayer. On Spy Wednesday, uh, Betty's going to lead us in the Tenebrae service, which is service of shadows, uh, that's what that literally means, but it's gradual extinguishing of the candlelight as the Passion narrative is read. Uh, Norman's going to officiate and preach at the Monday Thursday uh, Holy Eucharist, which will include incense, um, and uh, will end with the stripping of the sanctuary of the symbols of our faith. Uh, it will not include uh, foot washing this year. And the morning of Good Friday, uh, we will share a Holy Eucharist on Reserved Sacrament with solemn intercession and meditation on the cross from the VAS service. In the afternoon, we'll post online uh, uh, Zoom stations of the cross service. And uh, uh, Holy Week in the morning, I've already mentioned that we do have the men and women gathering for breakfast and lunch, respectively. Now, all of these services, except for the Stations of the Cross, are in person. Uh, mask wearing is mandatory at the Tuesday Compline service at the Historic Chapel because uh, we are in such cramped quarters. And the Palm Sunday and Monday Thursday services are being live streamed. It would be wonderful to share these with you. And right after that, of course, are the Easter services, as you see on our screens. Uh, my email to the parish yesterday went into detail about them, and we'll look uh, at them in more detail next Sunday. Uh, for now, I'll just say that they are all in person. Uh, mask wearing is mandatory at the sunrise service, which you get is at the chapel, of course, and also at the 8.30 Easter Day service. And the reason for that is out of respect for all those who aren't comfortable with gatherings with unmasked people. And in fact, we will begin to from Easter onwards to have an 8.30 and a 10 o'clock service again. And we'll go back to that pattern that we will have the 8.30 service uh, with wearing masks for those who are more comfortable with that. At 10 o'clock, we will continue the practice of having a mask wearing option. All of them recommended. <coughs> and uh, the uh, 10 a.m. service is being live streamed. Now, um, to read about all that's happening, uh, including our uh, uh, various uh, uh, other services, uh, such as uh, midweek uh, uh, online services and things like that, uh, please do check out our weekly news bulletin and our monthly issue of Living Waters, uh, and also uh, uh, my weekly email, if you don't receive that, or the uh, email newsletter that is mailed out on Sunday mornings, and please do let me know what that means. We don't have your email address, and we would love to, to have that to communicate with you. Now let's go and have our closing hymn together, where we sing about God who's giving knows no end. And uh, let us uh, stand as we're able and sing this one. It's number 601 in our new calm praise. Oh, my God. 